Good evening. Yeah, my name is uh, Francis Mutaura, a friend of Rea Marangu. <coughs> Professor Rea Marangu, Professor John Marangu and the family, Professor Kaimeni, Cabinet Secretary for Land, Chancellor of Anu University, Chairman of Council, and members of the Council, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Yesterday, the Masujad Day was a special day in the current of this nation. It is the day we celebrate the heroes and the heroines of the nation. These are people who, are, who have through their extraordinary effort and uh, courage, made a lasting impact on the conscience and the well-being of this country. Today, we are celebrating the career of Professor Marangu. the Vice Chancellor of African Nazarene University. After 21 years on the driving wheel of the university, <clears throat> Professor Marangu courageously undertook the challenge of translating the idea of our university into a fully fledged and successful private university in this country. Private universities encounter serious challenges at their formative stages due to limited funding and the numerous regu regulatory requirements they have to comply with through our vision, courage, and determination, she has led the university into one of the best universities in this country. Today, many students are graduating with bachelor's degrees, master's degrees, and PhDs, and many of them are professionals and leaders in their various careers. Professor, nobody else in the history of this country has headed a university for over 20 years. You must be a special person. <laughs> to do that, you must satisfy the employer. Employers are sometimes very impatient. The fact that they have been satisfied with your work for 21 years you must be a special person. For the time I have been around, and I have been around for a long time, I have not heard of any strike in African Nazarene University. This country is known for strikes. You must be a special leader. You are a role model to your students. You have been a team leader among your staff and in the leadership of the council.
you are an inspiration to students and everybody you work with. You struggled for higher degrees to acquire higher degrees at a time when even basic education was very difficult for a girl or child. You broke the glass ceiling. You broke the cultural glass ceiling that contains women. We thank you for opening the way for so many women. I know what you mean to the, our community. Call it our community, not the Kenyan community, because I know we are international here, but I mean the male community. You had to walk many miles, many miles, across valleys. We have very many rivers, and we had a lot of bushes to go to school. And you managed. And eventually we went to America. And you conquered. Got very good degrees. You taught there. You came back. At the Kenyatta University, you are able to develop the Department of Home Economics as one of the most successful departments of the university. You encouraged many of your students, and a lot of them spoke there in the screen. Professors, many professors, people you mentored, and encouraged them to go beyond really the domestic economics. Domestic meaning the home, the house economics. I remember one time you told us when home economics or domestic science was introduced in this country by the colonial government the purpose was to make women good wives. And that was enough. Once you are a good wife, take care of your husband and your children, the deal is done. You are not expected. Remember you told me, I think he's, I don't know, it's Professor Mogenda. Who told me that? Or you, either of you, or both of you. You are not expected to go beyond that. Today, because of your inspiration, we are having some of the best women leaders in this country. Among them, Professor Olive Mugenda. I think she, <laughs> she is here. Please stand up. We are proud of you. She built probably the second largest university or largest university in Eastern Africa. That's a woman. Professor Margaret Kobia, who, who is the, the head of public service in this country, chairman of the Public Service Commission. The entire public service in this country, which comprises more than 300,000 teachers and more than probably another 300,000 civil servants fall under control. 
We have, of course, the chairman of the Teacher Service Commission. But we always look at the chairperson of the public service as the senior, <laughs> as the senior sister. Because even the chairman of the Teacher Service Commission is a woman. That's why I'm saying, Professor Marangu, you are the leader. You broke the grass ceiling, and we are really very proud. Judge Komi was competing. Justice Komi, she was she left. She was competing to be the deputy chief justice, and she missed very narrowly. <laughs> Next time she will. Next time you will. What I'm saying is the, you know, the, the women empowerment has become a reality in this country. And now we are concerned more about the future of the men who feel threatened. <laughs> Apart from your distinguished works in the universities, your knowledge has been extensively tapped by the government institutions which are mandated to develop education in the country and in beyond. You made tremendous contribution in the area as a director in the Commission of Higher Education, the Kenya Institute for Education, the Jomo Kenyatta Foundation, the National Council for Science and the Technology, and the Inter-University Council of West Africa. As the former head of public service and also Secretary General of the East African Community, I am interacted with you extensively in trying to benefit from your knowledge on how we can shape educational policies for the region and for this country. I know how, how well you articulated the need for the government to provide a neighboring environment for the development of private universities in this country. We all know now the private universities have been very vibrant in this country. They have provided opportunities. They have expanded together with the public universities accessibility to university education. We are now focusing more not on accessibility because it's there, but on quality. And I'm sure that will also be achieved with people like you. I'm sure you have left, you have trained a lot of people to take from where you have left. I want at particular to pay tribute to you for what you, you have done to the male community. I'm the patron of Njurincheke, and that's the highest council 
of the Meru community. You are one and your husband and there are a few other, a couple of other people. You are the people who broke glass ceiling to enter into a university. You showed us the way. All that we did is just to follow. Today, the Elanja Meru is proud to be a host of three fully pledged universities. One private, three public. <laughs> this is because we value education. We have seen those who succeed in education are transformative. During Cheke, the Council of Eroders was generous enough to give the government 600 acres free to establish Meru University. That is the value we give to education. Sorry, I've been a bit long, but I think it's worth it. I wish you a very happy retirement. You should retire with your head high, carry your head high. Your legacy is not just a national legacy. You are a national hero. More than that, you are a global women, women empowerment human empowerment leader. You are no longer local. I would, I would be, it would be very narrow of us to consider you and all the achievements, everything you have done as just a Kenyan reformist. You are a global reformist. Thank you very much, and God bless you.